Hey, what is going on everybody? It is David Palmer, the Leo King, and we are here at UAC 2018, and I've got an amazing astrology here. We got Sam Jeppy in the house. I'm super excited to have you here. Good to be with awesome, you. Awesome, man. Thank you, thank you for having me. And for people who don't know Sam, um, he's not just your average astrologer. And the reason why I say that is because not only does he teach astrology and not just be an astrologer and do consultations, which is already a huge feat, but you also like to keep expanding the astrological community and understanding, you know, a broader sense of the zodiac itself, which I think is what I like the most about you. Oh, thanks. Yeah, I've been doing a lot of work the last several years, actually clarifying both zodiacs, both systems, um, honoring how especially the tropical zodiac um, is, or I should say Western astrology is actually the science that interprets the, um, you know, the tropical zodiac calculation and mm -hmm. Vedic astrology is literally like the science that interprets the sidereal zodiac. Like the two sciences are meant to interpret the zodiac. So what I've really come to understand is that the zodiac is like the foundation, like the body. Yeah. And these two different branches of astrology were basically developed around that calculation. Rather, th And I think this is why when you start saying, let's take one system and use another zodiac to try to interpret it and see which one works better and these kinds of things that you hear, it gets a little, it just really doesn't work. So when you're, as when you're asking about zodiacs in the work that I've been doing, it's a lot from this point of view. So I honor both. I honor all of it. I'm glad people are doing zod um, you know, yeah. doing astrology <laughs> exactly. rather than something else. I mean, because if you kind of go from a basic sense of just astrology in general, yeah. and you kind of you look at it, I mean, really, it's like sometimes we get caught up in oh, exactly okay, where is it, and which system is right or anything. Right. But there are so many fundamental, just basic astrological knowledge that you can just use just on every day, and it, it's like. You can learn so much from just the most basic stuff without getting too caught up in all those systems too, which is beautiful about it. And, and the thing about it is this, is that when we get into the which system is right, which zodiac is right, it's really a very narrow approach. Mm. Both are right, but both don't work in both settings, and the, you do have two distinct systems. The easiest way to understand it is you have Western medicine. Mm -hmm. you have let's say Chinese medicine. Right. They both work. One isn't right and one isn't wrong. But if you start taking Western medicine approaches and start trying to practice Chinese medicine with it, you take Chinese medicine, acupuncture, and start to apply it in a Western allopathic medical sense, you're going to create a mess. But both of them are treating the body. Right. So the body is the same. When you're talking about zodiacs, the sky is the same. When you look up, it's one sky. Right. But you have two distinct sciences that have developed to measure the sky in different ways. Yeah. So when you start, some of it can be transferable, but you can also just turn it into a sort of relativism that says yeah. anything can work at any time, anywhere. So, but, but okay, so then we're not doing science. So you, there's a, it's a fine line. It's a fine line, but at least conceptually, I think it's important to understand that both sciences are valid. They're both legitimate. One isn't right, one isn't wrong. Right. And this is why we have to understand the scientific underpinnings to know when we're being creative and when we're just making a mess and confusing right. everybody. Because it can look the same if you don't know what's happening. Well, and that's yeah. kind of where I'm coming in at this point is sort of taking a scalpel to some of the stuff that's really a bit sloppy and trying to say, okay, I'm it's open to all of it, but, but yeah. some of it is we have to have some discrimination. So. We're jumping right into that. <laughs> well, I, right away. And I, okay. I, I think it's a good thing because it's why we're if here. we take astrology in general, there's an outside perspective of people thinking it's, it's a pseudoscience or whatever. Right? Yes. So as a community, it's important for us to deal with the issue with and not just have it be a circus that just it, any it, carnival ride exactly. works and without this bolt it doesn't it, matter and then right. guess what happens people are getting right. flying out it, of carnivals and stuff. <laughs> it, yeah i mean it's not just a free-for-all i mean yeah. and but yet i'm extremely open like for instance i've seen where you can take something like in western astrology progressions uh-huh you can apply that to sidereal zodiac yeah even vedic astrology principles certainly 
much of the sciences, they share exactly the same techniques because they have the same source, but they then do. they diverge. And my feeling, it's not even a feeling at this point, I have a lot of evidence, is that a big part of the divergence is because of the zodiacs. Yeah. Because Vedic pretty much stayed the same because the zodiac stays the same. The, exactly. They still use the sidereal. It's pinned to the sidereal sky, sidereal signs, houses, nakshatras, harmonic charts. It's all pinned and it has been for 2,000 years. Right. That's why we still practice it that way. Right. Western astrology, as the zodiac shifts and changes, there's all these things added, there's all these methods house systems to find where you are on Earth because it's much more Earth-centric, yeah. all of this. So you see how the science itself interprets the zodiac. So each system is interpreting the zodiac, just like each medical system is still interpreting the body, but in a different way. So you gotta have some discrimination to see how that's really working. Yeah. Um, so, and by the way, these are conversations that are happening all in over, front of in the camera. Front of, I know, I wish people so, could see how many people are right in, so, behind this camera right now. So, you know? by the way, David and I didn't rehearse what we were going to say, so him just jumping right oh, in, it's yeah. like, okay, we're jumping right into it. Then, yeah, right? no, that's how I like <laughs> to good. be. It's good. I, I, I want to ask you another question. And you can so, see it doesn't take much to get me started. No, and that's why it. I got you on here, because I love, I, you're so passionate <laughs> on camera. If you guys don't know his YouTube channel or his Facebooks or any of his work, Sam is so passionate about astrology and a, very passionate about certain subjects and connecting it with astrology and it's beautiful and you really help people understand it you really show people you teach them at the same time yeah. that's that's the best yeah. way to do it Thanks, man. so yeah. I think you're great at it but I have an interesting question about okay. this all right what do you feel about and this might be interesting because it's happening a lot uh, with some astrologers lately uh -oh. some astrologers uh -oh. using <laughs> Western astrology uh -oh. but with the Vedic background, if that makes sense. So they're using like the position of the Western planets, but then they're using the Nishakta system of Vedic. You know what I think about that. I, I want to <laughs> hear, I want to hear. Look, it's fine if they want to do it, but there's no historical, there, there's just no tradition for it. It just simply does not, there is just no, his, there is no historical perspective for it. It was never done. Right. The reason it was never done is because of what I just said. Right. And it's not as if they didn't know, because for instance, in India, They've been interacting with tropical astrologies and the, um, you know, with tropical astrologers and seeing the tropical zodiac from the beginning of time. They mm -hmm. always knew it. They knew it back when you go back into the Rig Veda. They were clearly delineating both ways of calculating hmm. forever. So they knew. Right. And they knew what they were measuring. They were measuring. See, it's very simple. You measure objects circling the Earth yeah. with the sky in yeah. the Indian perspective. Uh -huh. You don't take the seasons on Earth and right. project it into space, or the right. seasons in the northern hemisphere and project them into space right. in order to find the precise location of the object right. going around the Earth. Yeah. This is just the two zodiacs. Right. And people that are using tropical zodiacs should actually know that's what they're doing. Yeah, exactly. A lot of people don't and know, actually. That they, I have yeah. a very big article that's coming out that's really basically explaining what the tropical zodiac is. Mm -hmm. And I'm not saying it's wrong, but right. people should understand that it's taking the seasons in the northern hemisphere right and projecting them into space right. in order to find the precise location of an object circling right. the Earth. Now, if that's what you want to do and you think that's the best way to find an object circling the Earth, then do it. Yeah. And the entire practice of Western astrology is actually based around doing that. Yeah. And it's fine, it, it works. But Vedic astrology has never done that, never right. thought that was the way to do it, always knew that's what was happening. It's, and especially around the, like the 8th century to about the 15th or 16th century, they were interacting with Persian astrologers mm -hmm. who were practicing tropical, and the Indians never did it. In fact, a lot of the, a lot of the Persian astrologers in what's called Tajika astrology actually started practicing sidereally. Mm. So they've been interacting and mixing forever. So right. those who come along now and say, oh no, we should be using tropical zodiac signs and sidereal nakshatras and this is the right way to do it and the zodiac was always tropical and Indians always use tropical. See this was the problem is for years, for a few years there's been some astrologers saying this. Mm -hmm. It's simply not true. There's no other way to say it, it's just not true. And so there's no historical precedent for it. If they want to do it, they can do it. I'm not going right. to... Of course. But, yeah. but I was just having some conversations earlier. It's, at some point, you have to stop saying that it's still Vedic astrology or it's still the same practice because or, that's or just, it, it's a third thing. You know? It is a third thing, which is yeah. what I was saying. Which is yeah. what I was saying last year when I started talking about it. You're free to do it, but 
The problem is it also confuses a lot of students who yeah. want to learn Vedic astrology. This yeah. is the problem. This is what got me kind of fired up about it last year. Is because the whole principles, the foundations Vedic of the Nishakra system comes from the understanding of not the tropical system at right, all right. and the understanding of how it was in the As you ancient mentioned, practices. That, yeah, I'm I mainly it. a teacher and yeah. I have like currently like a hundred, more than a hundred full-time students right. and people who want to learn astrology all the time. And now it's hard to find one who does, even doesn't think, oh, well, maybe it's tropical. And it's, so right. it's confusing so many people. So I had to come down and say, look, that's not the way it is. It's right. never been that way. And if people want to do that, that's fine. But do you, to keep calling that Vedic astrology is a, it's kind of ingenuous, right. or, you right. know, it's, it's just not true. Yeah. That's not Vedic astrology. It's something else, and you can do that. But it, there's a lot of cultural appropriation these days. There are people that say, oh, we're practicing yoga. Like, a, you know, there's beer yoga. There's drunk yoga. Yeah, there's this yoga. There's, yeah. If you want to have exercise where you move your body with postures and drink alcohol, that's fine. But to call that something yoga <laughs> is called cultural appropriation. And you're right. hijacking the good name of yoga right, exactly. in order to get interest. Because if you said that's this an is excellent called... excellent point. Because this is called <laughs> drunk exercise, then who's going to come to your stupid class? I know. If it's called it's drunk yoga. Oh, yoga? Oh, okay. Right. I'm doing okay, yoga. Yeah, well, yeah, I'm drunk. Exactly. So th there's a reason people do it. There, right. And I think there's a reason people say, oh, I do Vedic astrology, but this way. And it's like, oh, I want to do Vedic astrology. So they use the name and then don't do the thing. Right. And this is what's got a lot of people who teach Vedic astrology upset. And it's been for a while. It's been going on yeah. for quite a while. <laughs> I know because you know the one thing that Western lacks that uh, the Vedic has is yeah. is culture. Okay, that's, yeah. that's one thing. I mean, History, sure, tradition. sure, sure. Like Western does have it with mythology, yeah. Roman mythology, Greek mythology, but there's a there's a disconnect, I guess you could say, with teaching it because it's almost like the traditions kind of got cut off, oh. if that makes sense. And, 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 and so there's nobody alive or there's nobody that continued. If you notice in India or any Vedic practice, it didn't stop. The, well, the, does that make sense? Like the people kept, kept well, this it is alive. Exactly the difference, does that make David. sense? Yeah, this yeah. is exactly the difference. And it's exactly the difference why I got people, goosebumps like, a little like, bit. <laughs> people like myself, see, this is why we're passionate about it is because yeah. Vedic astrology is still practiced, and here's how you can tell the difference. It's still practiced the way it was 2,000 years ago from the exact same yeah. texts. Right. And this is how you can see that the practice is still based on the sidereal sky. It's still right. based on those books. It hasn't changed because just like yoga, these are spiritual practices. Right, right. Western astrology is not even practiced the way it was conceived. Right. When people learn Western astrology, now they don't go back and study Tetra Biblos and Vedius Valens. They learn right. it from maybe maybe Lily, who was right. from the 16th century or something, but it's mainly, you know, Rob Hand and Alan Leo and mm -hmm. Dane Rudger and the modern astrology. It's still learned in a very modern way. Right. And the real difference here that you're talking about when you say culture, which is certainly true, but it's also Vedic astrology is still connected to Vedic, you know, to Vedic culture, as you say, yeah. but that includes you know, to really define culture, the medical system, uh -huh. the spiritual system. Like if you're a doctor, think you go to your doctor right. and you say, well, astrologically, I'm having a transit of Saturn through the seventh house. That's why I think I'm having problems with my hips. He'd be like, yeah. um, I'd forget your astrology. Okay. This yeah. isn't, but you go to uh, the Ayurvedic right. doctor and they're probably trained in astrology. And they actually have different herbs or gems or yeah. things to Ayurveda, help you. Right. Yeah, right. You, if, you go to your, if you go to your priest or like if you're, if you're religious and you say, oh yeah, astrology this, you probably wouldn't be too impressed either in, right. the, in the West. Yeah. So Western astrology is just kind of bolted on to culture. It doesn't have yeah. a place. Whereas in yeah. India, it's intimately connected. And so this is how you can just really understand. First, the original zodiacs were sidereal. There was no tropical zodiac. Right. Like if you want to bring it back to, to the zodiac, the original zodiac up until literally like the fifth or sixth century were all sidereal. Yeah. There was no such thing as tropical zodiac. And it's even speculative if, if that was the intention, even when the tropical zodiac was conceived. There's a right. few statements in Tetra Biblos, but I'm not even really convinced that was the intention, was to now right. start calculating it that way. It seems like he's just addressing that this is when it happens. Right. But the ancients were aware that the zodiac started at some point and the vernal equinox was somewhere different. They right. knew it. They, they talked it. about yeah. it. 
there wasn't they weren't confused. They didn't they weren't too yeah, stupid to know dumb. what they were. I mean, they knew what they were doing. Yeah. So every zodiac, the zodiac itself is sidereal because it's the space surrounding the earth. Correct. That is what a zodiac is. Exactly. It's not the calendar, it's not right. the seasons. So right. that's the first thing to understand. And so that whole tropical, let's take the seasons in the northern hemisphere and project it into space is something that was is really quite modern and it's it's a dark ages theory. It's when we right. were in the dark ages this was proposed. Right. So again, it doesn't mean Western astrology doesn't work, it doesn't mean any of that, but our getting away from the spiritual truth is directly correlated or timed to something like the tropical right. zone. They happened at the same time. Yeah. And that's because the, even yeah. back then, even back then, the Persians, the Greeks, mm -hmm. the they were very aligned with spirit. Right. You, when you go back and look at Greek alchemy and all, it's very similar to Indian yeah, alchemy. Yeah. And the Greeks, the Egyptians, we didn't even mention Egyptians, but Greeks, Egyptians, Tibetans Indians, too. all of those yeah. people who were using a zodiac, which was all of them, all of it was sidereal. You never even heard of tropical until we started to get into the dark ages. And, and then Renaissance. And it's and very, yeah, it's, it's very, very Renaissance-y to me. <laughs> and it's very um, possible, and it doesn't even take a lot of imagination to say, because it was conceived at the time that we were getting more into the dark ages and then fell into the dark ages right. for thousands of years, that they didn't even really understand that there was a mistake until hundreds of years into it. Right. And it wasn't even practiced in mass until about the 6th or 7th century right. when Arabs started doing it. Greeks never yeah. even used it. Right. It started because of Arabs and because Tetra Biblos was oh, translated yeah. into Arabic. Mm -hmm. The Greeks never did it, actually. The ancient Greek astrologers, they weren't mm -hmm. using that. They were using sidereal. Yeah. So, we can get into a whole thing about this, yeah, but exactly. that whole issue of zodiacs and two traditions and the and the and the disconnect from culture, they're kind of the same issue. They are. And this is the reason why when you go back and look at why Vedic astrology is still practiced the way it was conceived, yeah. it's very different than the way Western astrology is practiced now and it's still kind of being invented. Yeah, and it is. To its benefit, that's what it's for. Yeah. But I just had a guy, a software, you know Henry, who does oh, software. Yeah, I'm right there. Did yeah, you sign his petition passages. about the yeah, time passages, Henry Seltzer? He yeah. He's he's um, making he's a petition a for yeah, and he's making a petition for some new glyphs because they found some new objects circling oh, yeah, somewhere. Yeah. I don't even remember the glyphs. Yeah, and, it, and also so it's always that, adding more. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, that's the thing. Is, is Western's kind of uh, pasta on the wall, and if it sticks or not. <laughs> yeah. And the experimentation of it, and a lot of that, and then but. What I love about the Vedic science and the art of astrology is the tradition and the, but, but, but when you were talking about it, I, I think like, okay, yeah, so the Romans, the Greeks and all this stuff, whatever, and there's this disconnect. India, where this source really comes yeah. from, yeah. the whole country hasn't changed. It's stayed the same. It's not like it's gone anywhere or there's been changes in power. Right. And then you, oh, get, right. then you get Christianity involved and then there's so much, there's, there's so much like, and you know, it's, thing. it's all, it's like a, it's like a tornado. Does that make sense? Like the whole, the whole European Northern hemisphere tornado that happened. And then there's this ancient culture that just hasn't left, but hasn't changed and just keeps bringing and passing the right, the same information on and ha that hasn't left. And it's now and passed if you on. Re yeah. Absolutely. And if you w want to really understand it, understand this. It's not as though India wasn't affected. In fact, India was occupied. Everybody's occupied India. Right. And the tradition hasn't changed. Right. That's the part that's That's miraculous. even crazy. It's yeah, not yeah. like they're in a jungle somewhere. Right, right. They're in the middle of all of it. Because, oh, yeah. again, you want to understand, and, and I said it before, but by the 6th century, 6th or 8th century, India was, was occupied by Arab, Arab yeah. Arabic conquerors for a thousand years and then Western conquerors. And, but what happened to their astrology, their yoga, their all of it? Nothing. Nothing. It Still maintained. There. Why do you think that is? Well, because Vedic astrology is first and foremost geared around finding the auspicious times to do things. Yeah. And all the books they wrote, all the temples they built. Now, it doesn't mean they're all standing, but the tradition itself is from the Veda. Yeah. from the Vedas and when they wrote those books, when they committed those things mm. to antiquity or into the future because they knew we were sliding into the dark ages, they did them at the right time. They didn't right. just say, oh, let's write this down because we're going to get invaded. No, they were like, okay, here's the auspicious mohorta to write this stuff because we're about to slide into utter chaos and we're losing knowledge. We're wow. losing the knowledge of the 
from the Sat Yuga or from the Enlightened Era. They knew they were sliding into it. This is ah. why they wrote books at all. Because right. before they wrote books, it was all oral transmission. Got Nothing you. was written down. And this is why also you start seeing things written down when outsiders come in. This is why you start seeing it when Greeks started, in, started influencing and Arab started influencing India, that's when you started seeing a lot of things written down. Because Indians, the information. Because yeah. Indians didn't write things down as much because there's an oral tradition right. is more honored. So the real sages had the oral tradition. Finally, it started to get written down and it maintained forever, uh, you know, throughout all of the all, the, all of the millennia, yeah. even though no one's been occupied more than India. Yeah, I mean, look, true. Europe has actually been more stable. Look yeah. at India. It's been by, by people extremely hostile to Hindu gods and all this, yeah. but again, even their Arabic conquerors, even though they were conquered by Arabs and Persians who were using tropical and British and, and everybody, Arab, yeah. they didn't they didn't convert to tropical. Why do you think they didn't convert? Because they were too stupid. No. And unfortunately, I, I hate to say it, but there are some who are advancing these theories that propose that theory that that the Indians were just following their backward ways rather than rather than understand the wisdom of their, of, of their Arabic conquerors that they should be using tropical zodiac. There huh. are people who think that the Indians were just too backward and stupid in honoring tradition to have the common sense to start using tropical zodiac. Like I told you about that right. Arab when they, yeah. were, when they were mixing with the Tajika astrology. Uh -huh. It's very clear that the reason they didn't do it is because it wasn't accurate and it didn't interpret that system correctly. But there are people who say, oh, this was the opportunity when they should have converted to tropical, but right. they were too dumb and too backward and too married to their tradition to have the sense to do it. Right. That's, Again, yeah. uh, right. Uh, based on what? Nothing. Nothing. No proof yeah. of that. It's no. just an opinion. Yeah. And honestly, I just want to say this is one of the biggest problems with all this stuff now is people get these ideas and they have these biases and these opinions and they start stating these opinions as if they're facts. Right. Well, there's this fact because you can interpret this text a little differently. My opinion is this proves this. It's just an opinion. Right. There's no factual basis to that. In fact, every fact points to the fact that they knew what they were doing. Right. In every text, they explained the stuff correctly. Yeah. And they never changed as far as zodiacs because that system is not developed to interpret that calculation. It simply right. doesn't work. Yeah. Yeah. No, it makes sense. So, I, I so love it, it was conquered many times. So that chaos that come, and the last thing about that is when the tropical zodiac theory was even proposed, this was at a time when the library in Alexandria, Egypt, was in extreme decline. It was proposed around the second, third century. Uh -huh. By this time, the Romans had come in and started burn You started seeing the Library of Alexandria just kind of, you know, just becoming decimated. It was conquered by Rome at that time. It Ooh. wasn't Alexandrian anymore. It wasn't even Greek or Hellenistic. Claudius Ptolemy was a Greek citizen uh -huh. living in Egypt um, who had, you know, his name Claudius was a title from right. Rome. So he was a Roman trying to codify Greek um, natural sciences and bring them to astrology, which was fantastic. He was trying to make astrology legitimate. He was trying yeah. to legitimize it so that it wasn't just seen as some weird, er, right. weird thing. Probably because a bunch of Romans are like, "What's this nonsense?" But they actually knew that it worked. So, yeah. but the point of the matter is that whole kind of tornado chaos that was coming to the West happened yeah. right when the tropical theory was proposed. Yeah. This is what, this was the this is the context and, of it, and it was pre figuring out that we're not on a flat earth. You know uh, what I mean? Like the, it, it, here's that's, a, that's even the crazier part. Than, than, the crazier part yeah. is, and, and again, this is all a big part of it. The biggest contribution of Ptolemy wasn't the Zodiac. Right. It was his Ptolemaic theory. Exactly. The Ptolemaic theory, which is basically that the earth is the center of, the, the, of the universe. Yeah. And it, that wasn't even overturned until the Copernican theory, right. literally 1500 years I later. Know. Yeah, exactly. So he was operating from a premise. And then in fact, the ancient Greeks were as well, including Hipparchus, the one right. who, quote, discovered precession, what Hipparchus discovered was that the sky was moving in relation to the earth. Yeah, it was. But he thought the sky was moving, not the earth was moving. Right. And then once... And so this theory of precession, it was just a calculation. Mm. He just noticed that it slipped. Yeah. But he thought it slipped because the sky was moving, not because the earth was wobbling. Right. And so Ptolemy's assertions, even picking up on Hipparchus, was yeah. that, yeah, we're the center of everything, everything's moving around us, and even the precession theory right. is not based on the earth wobbling. We know that now, but right. they didn't know that then. Yeah. The sky was moving as far as they were concerned, or there was at least confusion. Yeah. So we gotta go back and look at all of this stuff yeah, and say, exactly. oh, well, the Greeks figured it out. And again, this is what a lot of people are saying who try to overturn the sidereal, but saying, well, but they didn't know what they were doing back then. 
okay, they didn't, that's act, actually not true, but even the idea that they knew what they were doing, right. it was based on the Ptolemaic theory right. that the Earth is the center of the universe. Yeah. And maybe they discovered precession, but they weren't sure what was processing. Right. It's m most evident that they probably thought that it was the sky that was processing, not the Earth that was wobbling. Right. So the whole Ptolemaic theory of this Earth-centric model is at the th foundation of tropical zodiac and in some ways Western astrology f for the most part. Right. Doesn't mean it doesn't work or doesn't or mean that, yeah. look, I've had Western astrologers look at my chart and in two seconds say some of the most amazing stuff <laughs> yeah. that I could never even, I, I can't see it in Vedic. So, right. And same thing goes for me as a Western. Like last night I was with this guy Sandeep and of course Capel, you know, last night and we were outside and they were just blowing my mind. Like literally, like just. The most important thing, like, and that also know? includes people who, and again, I have respect for if, and that includes people who are using tropical zodiac and sidereal nakshatras or whatever, if that's what they're doing, that's fine. I don't, I'm not opposed to them doing it, calling it Vedic and acting like the Indians screwed up. See, this is the problem. This is the part that kind of got me upset after a while because none of that is really true. Mm -hmm. The Indians didn't, there's no proof of that, and to just say that is, it's not only disrespectful, mm -hmm. but it's confusing and dishonest and confuses a lot of people. But if someone practices astrology that way, right. and they get great results, and they help people, that's the that's the most important that's thing. The most important, yeah. This is why all systems work because the most important connection is this one. I know, yeah. To the heart of the practitioner. Yeah. And I know practitioners whose heart is so connected to the tropical zodiac and Uranus and Chiron and yeah. midpoints between right. this sesquiquadrilateral yeah. aspect and the yod and whatnot. Yeah. And man, that's, that's the language through which they interpret the rhythm of the cosmos. Right. And that's constant. Yeah. Just like the person who practices Western, you know, Western medicine or Ayurvedic medicine yeah, exactly. or Chinese medicine. The most important thing is that your heart is aligned all, yeah. with that way of seeing it. Yeah. But I think what and you bring up is, is people needing to really look at, especially the Vedic art and science and, yeah. and and not just start kind of, like you said, I think that there's been a lot of just kind of like pushing it aside or saying like, oh, they don't know, like you were saying. Or, in that sense. And that's, and it's all bullshit. Well, I'm just going to call it out because if you do your research and you look yeah. at how much, I mean, I'm going to be honest with you, being a Western astrologer is easy because it's, I mean, I'm going to be honest because okay. it's, it's, you know, once you figure it out and you figure the systems, like there's the, the, there's not there's no culture, right? I mean, it's just understanding the mythology of the there's signs. There's a bit of making it up as you go. That, <laughs> that everybody gets, right? right? Like, let's be honest. But when you go into Vedic science, you have to really take a long time to get it because there are so much. It's a science. It's, it's a, based it, yeah, on, yeah. and this is why we're passionate about this stuff yeah. because it's not just a free for all. It's not it's, just you're right. It it's got tradition but it also has amazing magical qualities to it that to me, you know, when I hear it, I'm like, how, wow. It's, and it's the science of karma. See, it's literally the science of interpreting karma. One of the biggest things to talk about, and by the way, I'm gonna be talking about this a little bit in my class tomorrow here at UAC, is just the differences between Eastern and Western culture. First of all, yeah. the most important things is that Everything Indian, especially, I would say maybe especially the astrology, starts with the fundamental premise of who we are and why we're here. Right. You're, you're a product of karma, and everything in astrology is interpreting those different facets of karma. Yeah. It's not, and I mean, there are Western astrologers who don't even believe in reincarnation, quote. Like, I it's know. this big yeah. advanced concept. I mean, again, it's not, the, it's not to criticize it, but you would never hear something like this from a Vedic astrologer. No, the whole right. science, everything in Indian culture is based on the assumption, just the worldview. Yeah. And again, we're talking about worldviews here, and these are the things that are much deeper than practices, than structures. And this is what I was saying even at the beginning, is that there are things that are overarching that aren't up for grabs. Like, right. like you, don't, you, don't, you don't try to practice Vedic astrology and then go, well, but I don't believe in reincarnation. Or right. I don't believe in the soul's evolution. Then, then don't do it. Then don't do don't it. Don't do yeah. it. Then you're just not doing that. And so, again, that's one of the first things. So everything in Vedic astrology is interpreting the soul's descent from a unified, non-dual state right. into duality through elements, gunas, cosmic properties yeah. that aren't of this world. They, they're not right, of this right, world. Right. And then they filter down into a psychology and a mind and consciousness through things called vasanas and samskaras. Your karma, you know, your karma is in the mind. Yeah. Karma is in the mind and then it gets expressed through action. So right. this, this, this emergence of a form based on a um, spiritual 
um, you know, um, you know, um, past is the foundation of Vedic astrology. So it starts yes. with that. It doesn't. That's not something. Oh well, maybe that too. Western astrology starts with, well, here we are trying to figure right. it out. Who knows if there's anything afterlife, anything up there? All I know, right. but this is Western and and Eastern worldviews. Right. The astrology, of course, is going to reflect the worldviews. So Eastern starts with the fact that we're all spiritual beings that have descended into mm -hmm. form, and Western astrology and Western culture starts with the idea that I'm form. I'm form, and I have right. desires and ideas, and I don't know. Maybe there's a god. Maybe there's something right. up there somewhere. So they're different worldviews. They are. That, that, that actually begin. <laughs> it's true. But what's interesting is, uh, like in, in my own belief, I'm huge into karma, especially like, it's interesting, <clears throat> I think Vedic needs to get a lot of credit in, and Westerners got to give Vedic credit because for those that are very spiritual astrologers like myself in mm -hmm. a Western sense, mm -hmm. we are using the Eastern philosophies of karma, Absolutely. of the nodes of Ketu I've and Ratu, seen your work, Rahu. man. Like, you, you, like, you, like, you do a good job, Oh, David. thank you. Because that's the thing. is, like, I wouldn't be doing astrology unless I was a huge believer in karma right. or reincarnation mm -hmm. or that there's a really purpose of coming down here as a soul and coming into this life that there is yeah. a... There is a really high magical being and purpose for being here. It's not just a random act that we're just here. Like I am not into that. And vibe most at Western all, astrologers, you know? most Western astrologers, and Western astrology itself does an excellent job, a fantastic job, of making psychological models for right. the soul's evolution. Mm -hmm. In fact, I would say, and I have said that I think psychology and Jungian analysis and whatnot is really the spirituality of the West. Right. That's kind of where Western astrology goes, kind of leaves off, because then we start looking for something beyond that, and they usually pull from something Indian, like right. chakras and yoga and yeah. mantras, because that's the tradition of, that, of right. the thing beyond like the psychological right. Jungian archetype therapy model. And this is something that a lot of Indian uh, Indians and Indian astrology can do better. I do it a lot in my yeah. work. I interpret a lot. One of the reasons my work resonates with Westerners is because I'm, I, I bring it down to a very psychological yeah, you do. model. I'm very you do. much like, because everything in our life we experience through the mind psychologically. Right. So the psychology of the planets and signs and houses is how we experience it yeah, through our heart. True, yeah. Because we come from a spiritual place, but then we experience our karma as yeah. a feeling. Everything arises in consciousness as a feeling. It and doesn't, yeah. and the feeling precedes the action. And so true. those feelings come from the planets. Everything does. Yeah, it does. And in Indian thinking, this is based on what's called the three gunas. You have the sattva guna, which is that spiritual thing that is somewhat beyond. Then the rajas, which is emotional, mm. the passion, how it feels. And then the tamas, which is the physical, how the physical body expresses the feeling. So you address the feel, or you see the feeling, um, as preceding the action, but what's above the feeling? This is where Western tends to get a little bit mm -hmm. hung up because right. there isn't structures for it. This is why in Vedic and in, and in um, Indian, there's a whole science of saying you're not the mind, you're not the mind, the mind is right. the problem, in fact. Calm down the emotions, yeah. calm down the vasanas, which is what and they're called. And there's tools that follow from wherever the astrology is to help you already automatically. So it's already got a full systematic system that already tells you this where to what, go. Yeah. There's no lost energy. It's like, and you can do this and this. Like last this night, planet. Sandeep's telling me like, well, you should be doing on every new moon based on where my moon is everything. Right. You should be honoring your ancestral family and right. giving offering them food Maka. and you should be letting it. Like telling you me stuff Maka that Nakshatra. I had never Right. I'm getting goosebumps because I'm like, nobody ever told me this Was before. Was it Manka Nakshatra? Is that why? I don't know which if one because, Leo. you know. <laughs> oh, yeah, it is Leo, yeah. So. Well, Leo Manka is the big Nakshatra there about honoring the peach trees and the divine ancestors. But you said something that then it follows that you can yeah, do there's, it. There, there's actually. a place to go. There's a place to go, and there's actually a million tools ready for you to do it. And actually, that's you what's can cool e about it. And actually, you could even say it doesn't follow it, it precedes it. Yeah, that's a good idea. Yeah, it's a good notion. Before I get uh, off with you, I want to bring up another subject because okay. a lot of uh, Vedic astrologers don't do horoscopes. Oh. But I've noticed with you, you do horoscopes. Define what you mean by horoscopes. Like, we'll take, for example, um, New some moves. world event that's going oh, okay. on or uh, like, like Trump, for example, oh. or anything like that. <laughs> a lot of Vedic astrologers, um, there's only a very few that I notice. A lot of them like to kind of sit back and do more of just kind of one-on-one -on -one consultations. Mm. But, you know, I'm a horoscope astrologer who likes to talk about what's going on in the world, in the world. using the planets and using oh, yeah, yeah. all that to understand what's going on in our world. And I've, and I've noticed in the Vedic community, it's a very I've been slim, doing it for a long time. I know that's time. why I yeah. love you yeah. because... 
I, I don't find a lot of them. Right. There's not a lot of them. Yeah, I mean, I always try to connect it. I've, I've gotten a little slow here the last um, last couple months. I'm doing You're a little a lot busy. Of I mean, <laughs> you, you got the biggest astrology conference uh, in the world and you got yeah. speaking events going yeah. on and your schools. You got a lot going on. Yeah, but um, I've al I always c connect what's happening with the world, you know, with world events for sure. And also horoscopes that have to do with the cycles because the real yeah, cycle... Yeah. And again, one of the things we can get all jacked up even about horoscopes and what, or I'm sorry, about um, zodiacs, but the real natural 12, 30 degree cycles that are happening all the time right. are the lunation cycles. Yeah, I know. This is the reason there are, the reason there are 12 signs is because there are 12, 30 degree cycles each mm -hmm. year. Yeah. It's breaking up one right. circuit of the earth around the sun with the 12 lunation cycles. Right. So those lunation cycles are the real months and the real cosmic yeah. cycles. Oh, yeah. This is what underpins the 12 zodiac signs because mm -hmm. they realized that there was one year, but then within that, there were 12 portions yeah. that break up the year. Yep. So I do full and new moon lunation yeah, updates reports, yeah. at, at very li at very minimum I'll be I'll do that so at least every couple weeks but I usually do one video or so a week yeah where there's I also always give other updates. things or if there's a major planetary action that's happening yeah, you bring it up Mars and, yeah yeah, yeah we got this Mars K2 we got yeah. all kinds of stuff retrograde planets I know and yeah stuff. exactly so the great thing about being astrologers is always something to talk about always something but so why don't you tell everybody uh, just real quick how to get a hold of you and then what you're doing here at UAC and then yeah. uh, Cool, yeah, so you can go to my website. I got a, several, but um, if you want to get um, free classes and get on my email list, um, you can go to vedicartandscience.com. It's V-E-D-I-C, art and science.com. There's stuff there, a lot of articles. Also, there's a pop-up that'll ask for your email if you want to get some free classes. And um, yeah, and you, you can find me on YouTube too, right? I announce them and they sell out pretty quick, actually. Yeah. But the other thing too, because I'm here with my man David, he's a big YouTuber and Facebook <laughs> guy. There'll be a link, hopefully, or yeah. you know, there's an easy um, web URL that I've made, samsyoutube.com. Cool. If you click Sam's, if you if you type in samsyoutube.com, there will be a a pop up for you to actually join my YouTube channel. You so have you your can book join it. Too. What are oh, you yeah, talking books. about that? What's your book uh, website? Uh, you can go to yoga, or actually, you, you can go to getsamsbooks.com. <laughs> You're I so make smart. vanity no, URLs. That was, that was awesome. <laughs> I just, I, look, dude, it, it's because I have so much and then I forget. It's like, uh, it, <laughs> You're like, oh, good. <laughs> getsamsbooks.com. Yeah, that's a great And you can get a discount. I like that. <laughs> get, get vanity URLs, man, and then just redirect. Right. Yeah. Getsamsbooks.com has a special where you can get both of my books at a discount and um yeah actually i was looking in the uac uh flyer <laughs> saw your books in there and yeah, yeah i got books awesome. here too and yeah, if you're not in, at uac in here, yeah if you're not at uac sorry sorry but we can still get them at <laughs> yeah get sam's book oh i'm going to be teaching at get sam's <laughs> books com. Com. oh there's also another big conference that's coming up called sedona vedic astrology conference uh -huh. that i'm going to be teaching at and and teaching some of the stuff that i'm teaching here mainly on a system called Gemini astrology which is really powerful and very predictive so look for that sedona vedic astrology conference it's in end of november early december oh in sedona up. arizona yeah, that's yeah. Gonna come up. and, and I, I have a workshop sedona. yeah i have a workshop there it's getting sold out but anyway that's enough yeah links. no <laughs> well i love you sam all right it man love you to too talk brother you. i love what you do put it on me man you, you're like let's go it's let's like go. what 10 minutes or something i don't know we'll see <laughs> we'll see yeah love you brother you too man all right take care guys